Hello, chess family. It's me, National Master Jesse James, and we're going to be going over five study habits of masters. As you know, I am a chess master, so some of these rules are going to be very basic, but I promise you, if you do them, you will become a stronger chess player. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first one. And here's a, a one that many people know, but they do not do. Review your games. And this is done with the computer, if you can. Don't get me wrong, you should review your games by yourself at first, but use the computer as a tool. With that being said, many people do not study with the computer correctly. What do I mean by that? A lot of people will study with the computer looking for strategic moves. Not the best. Computers do not think strategically. They are just calculators. So how do you use the computer correctly? Simple. You're going to be using it for opening moves so that you can take a look and see what the best moves are previously. And then also you're going to take a look at it for tactics. Those are the two main things that you use the computer for. Do not ask them what the best strategic move is. They're not going to tell you. So with that being said, here is a quick example of this. Here I'm playing the, uh, the white side of this and I played a London system. And well, I got the move order incorrectly. And uh, one of the things that you can do is when you go and play either on chess.com or lead chess, there's an opening uh book on there so click that opening book and try to match the moves as much as possible for instance here i played uh d4 d5 knight f3 knight f6 i played the london system bishop f4 and pawn c5 got played here well i knew the best move here i went ahead and played pawn to e3 and my opponent played knight c6 and i was already out of whack here about what i should be playing this is why it's important to go over the game with the computer to look at the opening move here i was getting already a little bit uh, suspicious about what I should be playing next here because I was a little bit afraid of the queen b6 ideas which is the c5 one here I hadn't seen knight c6 so much with that being said here I did not know the best move and I went ahead and played pawn to c3 at this point my position becomes okay but definitely not the best so go back ask the computer what was I supposed to do here the computer recommends knight b to d2 for the opening book, or you can play D takes C5 here, which is what the computer recommends. Now you can go back through this and go ahead and see which one you like more. But this is why you use the computer, learn to uh, make corrections to your mistakes in the past. All right, let's go on to the next part of this, which is the other part when you use a computer to study. Look at it for tactics. See if, uh, when you're reviewing the game, see if there's any other things that you missed. Here, this is one of the moves in the opening I will rec uh, say real quick. Here, I knew the best move was supposed to go queen c2, queen c1, but it always feels wrong. But I checked it out later with the computer, and the computer did recommend that. Taking here did put me into a bad position. I don't know how I won this game. Luckily for me, my opponent made some inaccuracies, inaccuracies and I was able to go ahead and get a good position. And I'm just kind of speeding through here just because, again, I want to show you that the reason why we go over this with the computer is to check out your tactics. And here, well, rook a4 got played, knight c7, rook over to c1, bishop to e7, knight takes, king takes, bishop h5, rook f8, g4. Here I'm trying to create a pass pawn over here on the king side. King b6, pawn takes, pawn takes, bishop f3, rook to d8, king to f1 and knight to a5 and here is the exact moment where there is a tactic in the position and it's very simple whenever you're using a computer to know if there's a tactic because you're going to see the uh, numbers change right because whenever you're looking at it it's plus one or negative right well whenever a tactic comes up it's going to jump way up negative three negative four it's going to go up a few points there at this point there is a tactic in the position so what do you what do you do well ask the computer what it says and well here I was able to find the tactic. It's also good to check and see if your tactics were actually correct. Here I went ahead and played rook c5 here and got into a winning position. At this point, the knight is just uh, in a bad place here. And you cannot take, which is probably the best move in this position, because you're going to end up losing your knight by force. So bishop takes, pawn takes, king to c7, and rook takes on a5. Again, check with the computer. Let's go on to the next one, which is... Play regularly, not pull it, okay? We want to be, you want to be playing longer games and get used to it. I know it feels good to play these bullet games, but they're not best for you. Uh, one of the bad things about it is going to get very bad habits of moving fast without thinking. Let me show you a quick game that I played online. And, well, this is definitely not something I'm bragging about because I'm winning on time in these kind of positions. I'm definitely trying to kick back or stay back from uh, playing these bullet games. In this game, I got I went ahead and played the white side, and I ended up playing a Smith Moore. My opponent played what's called the Chicago defense, which is very popular, especially because Ben Feingold went ahead and uh, championed it. With that being said, eh, rook to d7 got played, knight takes b5. This is all theory, and so I was doing pretty well in this position. And bishop b7, bishop a4. Here, uh, the idea 
to win against the Chicago defense is basically to sacrifice on b5 and then put pressure because the king's in the center. And here, white does have a good plus here. And bishop g5, I mean, again, when you're making these moves, you're just getting a lot of inaccuracies from you and your opponent. And so, uh, this game, again, I, I just had a very good position and I didn't uh, push through it correctly. Here, I went ahead and played bishop b6, h4, a g6, h5. Again, you can see here that the quality of moves have gone down. I'm not playing anything very good around here. I was able to win this game, but that was just on time. All right, now let's take a look at a game where you actually take your time and you can actually find the good moves. Now, this was a game 90 and another um, and, and, and another Smithmore, and check how different the quality of the game is because you're actually able to sit down and think. This is one of the most important parts of chess, you actually think. Do not memorize what the computer is saying. You have to sit down and think. That's why it's usually best to review your games first by yourself and then check it afterwards with the computer. And then, again, the computer is used just ma mainly for your opening and also for tactics that you miss in the position. All right. In this game, e4, c5, d4, pawn takes c3, pawn takes, knight takes, knight c6, knight f3, d6, bishop c4. This is all theory. Bishop g4, already the first mistake with my opponent. And because I had plenty of time on the clock, it was easy for me to spot it. What do you play? Simple chess, undefended bishop. Tactics time. Bishop takes on f7 check. He went ahead and played king to d7. Pawn to h3. Knight to h6. Simple chess, just remove the defender. Bishop takes. Bishop takes. Queen takes. And pawn takes. And here I found another very strong move. One I'm pretty sure I, I, do, I do not believe I would have found if I was playing a very fast game. Here, white's move. Do you know what to play? Feel free to push pause if you want to. If not, check it out. Bishop to e6, a very nice move here. And here the king cannot take because of queen to f5 for check and mate. So back to the game. After bishop e6 check was played, king went to c7. Knight to d5 check. King over to b8. And here, queen c3 with a, with a nice attacking idea against the rook. Fortunately, the rook is trapped. Here, unfortunately, my opponent blundered again and played queen a5, thinking that they had forced the queen trade here. And, well, this is just going to be stopping the win of the rook over here on h8. Uh-oh, white to move and win. What do you play here? Simple chess. Pawn to b4. This is just going to block it out the way. And you're at least going to be winning a piece here, if not just winning the rook right away. All right, on to the next one, opening preparation. This is a study habit of every chess master you, you know. What are they doing? We prepare all our lines for whatever you're going to play. A quick demonstration of this is, what do you do if e4, if you are e4 player and they play e5? You must have something ready. Whether you're going to be playing, well, most people here are going to play knight f3 and they're going to play knight c6. So here, what are you going to do as white here? There's about three or four options you can choose here for white to get an advantage. You're playing knight c3, there is no advantage. It, it is already equal for black. And whenever you're white, you should have a small advantage. Vice versa with black, you should at least be getting into games that are equal, or if not, giving you positions that you like. So, what do you choose here? Are you going to play the scotch? Eh, scotch is good for about 1800 and below, I'd recommend. Or are you going to be playing the Italian? Unless you're a grandmaster, you'll be getting no advantage in this opening, so I don't recommend it for most uh, beginners. And then you also have the uh, uh, Panzini over here, which is a very good opening. Uh, not, not my favorite by any means. And then, of course, the one that I like to play and I recommend, the Rui Lopez, the Masters opening, because there's so many things that you can play in this one. And this is the opening preparation. Learn one opening and stick with that line as far as you can. Yes, when you get stronger, you can start uh, venturing out, but just learn one opening and master that, okay? It's like whenever you go to karate and you start learning, they, they don't start you out with the flying kicks. They start you off with just a ba very basic punch and a very basic kick. Just like that, we have to do it in our chess games. Learn and master that one thing correctly. All right. Oop, uh, do stick around. I do have a bonus one for you at the end. All right. The next one I have is find something you like and study it. One of the best ways you can get better at chess is studying with a book. Basically, that's it. You sit down with the book, you read it, and then you have the game right there and you move it on the board. That's really one of the best ways you can do it. Most people are just going to be playing online blitz and not practicing at all. Well, they keep making the same mistakes. When you study from the great masters, you will learn how to play like them. One of my favorite players to study is Paul Morphy. That being said, here is a nice uh, demonstration of that. 
Uh, by the way, if you like studying openings, study openings. If you like studying end games, study end games. This is a common technique that you use with very talented kids that play chess. You can't just make them study things that are boring to them. So whatever they like in chess, you do. If it's playing games, then we play games with them and we learn while we do it. Mind you, you have a stronger player there to help you out. So you can't do this by yourself. Here this demonstration is, well, I love this game because Morphe's always making threats. Here after bishop takes e5, most people here would look about playing pawn takes. Not the great pawn Morphe. Queen h5 for a double attack here, attacking the bishop, attacking the f7 uh, square for checkmate. Queen takes on d4, and here comes Morphe. Bishop takes, knight takes, queen takes on f7 check, king to d8. Bishop g5 check, bishop f6, and here the very beautiful move, knight to c3. Here, Morphe's just outplaying his opponent, and this demonstrates the idea about developing your pieces, and obviously black is underdeveloped here with all his sleeping pieces. It's a very nice move because, well, after knight c3, the new threat is rook a to d1. You can see that all of white's pieces are ready to attack. Unfortunately, black's king is just stuck in the center. All right, the next one we're going to go over, number five here is, well, practice your tactics. This is so Oh my gosh, people do not do this. I know so many very talented players that if they just studied tactics more or used their tactics wisely, they'd be winning so many more games. Unfortunately, they do not. They just want to play games or they just want to, um, or you know what, they, they do study the tactics, but they're studying it wrong. How do you study it wrong? One of the things I always like to recommend is when you are studying tactics, do not be that person that is studying with the one that is no time. Unfortunately, whenever you play in your chess games, there is always going to be a clock, unless you're just a casual player. At that point, you have all the time in the world. But most people, when they're playing chess, there is a clock running next to you. So I always recommend the blitz ones where you're actually getting as many problem solved as possible. Don't get me wrong, at the higher level, if there's lots of time on the clock, you may want to do it. But even then, in the game 90, there's no way you're going to be spending 30 minutes on just a tactical sequence because you need all the other time to actually get through the game. I mean, you might be able to master the other parts. So the tactics should be one of those things that's very easy. Whenever you sense something, you should be able to get the tactic pretty fast. And uh, don't get me wrong, sometimes they do take a little bit more time, but you need to study the tactics fast. So go ahead and do the fast ones. I hear so many times whenever I talk to like 1200s or 1300s, they tell me, Jesse, I have a 2000 puzzle rating. I'm like, yes, I, I, I know you have a, a very high puzzle rating because there's no time on the clock. I want to know how many tactics you can solve in the least amount of time. Well, with that being said, were you able to figure this one out? Hopefully this one wasn't too hard for you. Here, there's an unprotected knight. What do you do? Simple chess. Knight takes on e6. Queen to e5 got played in the game. But if the pawn does take, well, it's just tactics time here. Bishop takes on e6 check. King over to h8. And now some nice technique here. Rook takes on c8. Bishop takes on d7. Uh, uh, c8. And then bishop takes on d7. And here, white's just in a winning position here. All right, the bonus one, if you want to become a strong chess player, this one is not particularly a steady habit, but it's just, just a way to get better. What do you need to do? Play in chess tournaments. Oh my gosh. People always ask me, am I ready to play in a chess tournament? The question, uh, the answer I always have is, do you want to play? If you say yes, then go play in chess tournaments. Guys, it does not matter if you win or lose. It's about learning at the end of the day. That's why the people that stick around with whatever they do, especially over the long period, as long as they're learning, they're going to get better at the game. Rather than the person that just studies all the time and actually doesn't do anything. Yes, you can study as much as you want to, but you will never know until you actually go play in these chess tournaments. Plus, you're going to review those games either by yourself or with a stronger player, and that's going to help you become a stronger chess player. Not just playing online games because, yes, people are competitive online, but they don't seem to care about it as much, especially when there's rating on the line. People are always want to move up through the rankings. Go play in chess tournaments. Go look up your local chess club and or just go look go look for tournaments in big cities. Feel free to come, uh, check out Complete Chess. We do weekly tournaments here in San Antonio and also some big tournaments too. So go find whatever tournaments you want to and start playing in them. It does not matter if you want to lose. Remember, it's just about learning. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this. This is the five study habits of masters. We'll see you in the next video. <laughs>